field. Pass me down here. Everybody have one? Take one. Ask anyone how Thank you, sir. I'm going to All is good. It's a big bill. Oh, oh, I know. Sean, we've got some left. I'm fine. Thank you. We've got to break it out, don't we? Yeah, well, he said to break it out. The 1065 is the. Um, um, the uh, purchase price. I'll get the other two numbers. Yeah, yeah, we have price, what it's like the dollar will ask if we are separate for all this. Uh, yep. The other numbers on the uh, incidental, the one you should do five is just the uh, purchase price. And it's okay. Monday at 11. You have another copy of the agenda? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody got a copy of this? Do uh, you want one? No, sir. No, sir. No, no, no. I have nightmares about that word. It's no more than drainage. Right. <laughs> Not your first time being on that. No, no, no. I just heard so much about it since I've been here. Uh, Scarlett, did you want me to go get that rubber ducky? Please. Yeah, I have the one from West Broad Street. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome at night. Um, um, <laughs> World of Sewer Budget Review. Okay, what else is thank Chief again for, for this delicious food. I think I've seen everybody out going tonight. Um, nobody wasn't saying we didn't want that or didn't want that. We know it was good. So you want to start off with how spicy it is? Um, we have a number of things to cover this evening. Uh, I must apologize for the last meeting. I had no idea that our folks would go on that long. Um, and just as a rule of thumb, I think we should get all of our budget work out of the way first before we discuss incidentals, because sometimes you get bogged down in these things, and I don't want us here till 9 o'clock. Right. So that, that's the whole idea. And so if you noticed, I stacked the agenda where we cover all of the meat and potatoes for water sewer first. And then we've got the Castro Street uh, sewer, water sewer line replacement, Southwest Arlington Stormer Project, and draft bulky refuse ordinance. So that, that will all be for your review tonight. There's lots of information to go over. <clears throat> Something that's going to be new for you this evening is um, the state of South Carolina allows us to go back three years now for millage increases if you want to do that. We're trying to find out now what the exact uh, value of one mill in the city of Darlington is. So once we get that, then we'll be able to tell you how much you can raise the mills if you want to do that, and whether you want to just do it for one year or look back over the last two years. Um, this, the consumer price index increase this year is 2.13%. <coughs> one thing that we're waiting for from the state of South Carolina and the Budget and Control Board is to look at the population. If we have an increase in population, we can raise the millage rate even more. If there's a decrease, it's just 0%. Those numbers won't come out until May 24th, so we won't have anything final for you whether you want to raise millage or not, until the week of May 24th. Um, it's just the way the state does business. They do the uh, school districts first, and the counties and the municipalities are always last. And that hurts us from a budget standpoint. But you know, when we have the numbers, we'll have the numbers for you, but just later in this month. So that's one thing we'll hand you tonight. We're gonna also give you some information about uh, state law allowing us to raise millage rate and how, how that is done. Could you say it could be done in the 26th? Uh, we, we'll have, we'll have those numbers. Which are the 24? The 24. And also, we're, you're going to get a printout of the um, millage caps from 2008 all the way up to 2018. That information will come your way. Now, I'm not going to hand it out right now because you'll start looking at it and reading it. So we want you to keep your mind on the uh, water sewer budget. Just a reminder that we do have the recreation work scheduled for May the 15th. Also that night, I was going to include the uh, building and codes enforcement, and also the um, uh, clerk of court. Those are smaller ones; won't take that long to cut. Um, and so those those three things we would plan for May the fifteenth. It's Tuesday, May the fifteenth. Recreation. We'd also would cover the court, the clerk of court, and building codes. 
any things that may be of interest for you for whether it's recreation or those other departments, uh, just let us know and we'll try to do, you know, maybe some breakouts for you. <clears throat> There's just been so many questions about the stormwater and the water and sewer and some of the questions we can't really answer on the stormwater because we just signed on the bond yesterday. Um, the new bond will uh, take effect within the next week. Um, the bank, Sterling National Bank, will wire the funds sometime early next week. Um, we currently have $1,131,000 in our stormwater account. That money will stay there, except for interest that we have to pay B and T, which we owe them approximately $38,000 for prison. And uh, that's interest for the first year of the bond plus a $13,000 early uh, prepayment penalty. So you take out that $38,000, looking at roughly $1,100,000. There's an additional uh, $80,000 you have to pay to the bond attorney and to first try and financial for working out the uh, particulars of this particular uh, finance, which has been very difficult. So $1.1 million, and then uh, Sterling Financial will give us approximately another $1.2 We'll have 2.3 million in that stormwater bond account as of May the 9th, I hope. And we had the building taken down at 909 Pearl Street. And so we're waiting for DOT to clear, clear us to go work on the stormwater project. And I'm sorry, I, I told you I, I'm doing exactly what I said we shouldn't do, which is get another stuff. Since you brought up that building, did we say those um, doors? Um, they don't fit. When we, they don't fit? They don't fit. They're not, they're not, um, they explained it to me, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't understand all the engineering components. Well, I think we're gonna have to get something that's gonna be custom. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Brian's talking about having some doors put in at the street department. So um, Kendrick or whoever the mechanic is can work in a bay that's cool or hot depending on the time of year. Because right now if you go in there and in the, in the winter time it's cold, in the summertime it's hot. Yes, it is. somewhere cool and warm to hang out. So the idea that he had was to get a garage door and put it in one of the areas so it would be cost less to heat and cool. And that's a good idea. Mr. Kinsall has got your breakdown of our, our water sewer fund. Uh, I'm going to paste it forward, first page. Line up 101 is salaries. It's going to be 1.5%. Increase. First line. Uh, insurance and bonds. He said that we had finalized insurance yet. It comes up. I guess Blue Cross had to give him the final figures. So Mr. That, Mr. Moore said they were going to come today, but I haven't seen them yet. So that may change a little more with us. Some of the salaries. You want me to save my question to the very end? Please. Yeah. Okay. Well, then no change. You can go down to the tort insurance states. <coughs> work. Okay. Y'all want me to read the numbers? Y'all want me? We want to just go down. Retirement. Print all supplies, 15,000, stay the same. Postage, 17, stay the same. 212 contract OM. We increased that. Davis and Brown asked for an increase. They're having to pay their operators more money to maintain them. There's a shortage of operators, so everybody's fighting for them. Like police officers. What line is that? 212. a little bit because just paying the guys memberships and more environment stuff. Auto, auto expenses, 20,000 stay the same. Refunds, 450 stay the same. Electricity, gas, 84 stay the same. Telephones, 5 stay the same. Maintenance, service contracts, 9700 stay the same. So machine and equipment, 108. Building repair, 1228 a 1,000. Small hand tool, 700, 931. Next page down to uh, uniform with uh, line 241, stayed the same at 2900. Chemical 248, at 20, stayed at 25,000. Medical and lab supplies still at 2600. Physicals up to 600. Uh, meters, parts, and supplies line 256, stayed at 50,000. Pipe fittings and hydrants, 257 at 30,000, stay the same. Advertising's 1,000. Vehicle insurance, 3520. That increase, that was a mandate from the insurance reserve fund, just so you know that increase. And uh, 
building insurance, so probably the same reason because they really went through this stuff this year. Uh, employee training, state at 3,500. Professional services at 45,000. Permits at 1,000. And special contracts at 16,500. Uh, other operating expenses at 6,000. Just a little comment on that special contract, 272 and 165. That is DHEC does for a sample. And what we pay in is DHEC to do. The agreement was made by all the work systems that we would pay. Rather than they have any non bias in it, DHEC has all the samples done and they analyze them. And we pay DHEC for that, that 165 on that particular set of samples. That's continued to go up, hasn't it? It, it say pretty close. It sets up a few hundred or eight. Joe was a little bit happy about it. And on seeing line 288 of uh, painted water tanks, that will come off. That won't be on next year's budget because we're planning on Pine Street getting painted before the budget. And the total comes out at 528458. And that and 912. And then capital is Building fixed equipment, the 381s, 2500, it stays the same. Uh, machines and equipment, 385, 25,000. Miscellaneous equipment stays at 4,000. Traffic control stays at 600. Radios and equipment stays at 1,000. Water line extensions at 25,000. New water meters at 8,000, stays the same. And, uh, Bond payback on the big bond. This is the payment four out of 15 at 181, 174. Payment four on that bond. And that total is a 247, 274 with a grand total in the 912 budget at 1,263,150. And some of the viewers might know 912 is war. The 912 budget relates to war. <coughs> How many employees do you have in this department? Well, they really all corrupt and do everything. <laughs> we don't have any real dedicated, just dedicated water because they do what has to be done. Other than the three in the office, they're not really water. Shonda's probably the only one that would be totally water. And Shonda can take water bills, payments. She takes you to train all of us and she goes out and does rebrews, cuts people off and on and stuff. This. And usually between her and her guy, she usually has a Inmate, they can replace a meter or put a meter. So that's the deal they have to drive, drive yeah, around. Usually right? riding around a lot. Oh, okay. Right. So uh, you have total then of employees. Uh, uh, we will save the question for later. Remember? Oh, okay. Write your question down. So I forget. Let me check. Yeah, I'm going to do it. That's not good. All the employees will be totaled in there. All right. And then on page 58, 58 would be 914C. 914C is the sewer collection system. So this is the sewer pipes and the pump station. <coughs> and the line 101 salary again, that's got the one and a half percent increase. And also we've got 39,000 stuck in here for potential back truck driver. That's the person that will be responsible for the day-to-day -day operation of the back of the truck. One of those positions comes out of water sewer, one will come out of this general fund street and sanitation department. And then going down, like I say, insurance is going to be the same thing. That's going to probably fluctuate some. Um, retirement, they'll find us pretty standard on that part. Uh, down to 212, and contract O&M. We upped out again a little bit. First time in several years. Uh, membership and dues stays the same. Auto operating the same. Everything. The rest of the pay the same. Telephone. Maintenance. Service contract. Machines and equipment expense. <coughs> building repair. Small hand tool. Uh, painting supplies stay the same. See mom. This is stuff required by. DHEC, this has anything to do with a manhole or repairing anything with the sewer to keep it from overflowing or spilling. It's called a sea monitor. And 
in this of got we kind of use it to collect money. We have a you want to go that now for sure. Go ahead. Uh, Joe Lewis lift station, pump station. Everybody's figures on Joe Lewis Boulevard. If that pump station goes down, the bypass goes down. Everything from uh, Bay Island Seafood to B and B restaurant will shut probably for two or three days. So it would probably take us that long to get some kind of pumping system set up to bypass that lift station. We patched it about two or three months ago. Explain how many times you fixed it. Uh, it's, been, it's literally falling apart. We put new control panels and all that. So pumps are rusting out, pipes are rusting out. So it's in dire strait. The estimate to fix that lift station is about $240,000. What, what I want to do is Rear has another round of grants coming up in September. We've got the rear grant tied up on the ditch, but they have one in the economic side. And we want to apply for it on the economic and use the jobs that were created on the back Walmart and all the jobs that were created in the bypass area. It's a long shot. And if any big, another Volvo or anybody like comes in the state, they'll give a little bit of money to that big industry. But it's, you know, it's doesn't cost much to apply for them to see if we can get that and also work to do some more work on another bit of a pump station. If not, then we're going to have to do kind of like we did the water tank, just take part out of the budget and, and then the rest of it have to come out of the capital reserve. Come to me, that's the most <coughs> crucial item we've got right now, probably on this year. We are um, working on replacing the reserve that we're going to lose for painting the two water tanks and now the uh, Joe Lewis uh, repairs. Um, we have a company that we rent the North Main Street uh, well for cellular service. We get currently $38,000 a year for that rental. It's gone up uh, probably $15,000 in the last five years. Um, Verizon owns the rights to it. It used to belong to Altel. Verizon bought out Altel. We've had a company approach us about buying out that lease with the upfront cash payment. Now, the number that keeps getting mentioned to me is anywhere between four hundred fifty and $500,000. Um, I have held off on purpose getting serious with the fellow until we had this meeting tonight to talk about it. Um, if we did that, we could take that money and put it back in our reserve. And we put us in a pretty good spot. Uh, the, the thing that I'd like for y'all to think about, and I want to explain it pretty clearly, is if we lose that money, that's thirty-eight thousand dollars a year plus whatever is going to accrue in, in future years that we'll lose each year is revenue. So long term, we lose that money. Now, the from what I see is I'd rather replenish our fund and do something right now. But if they're <coughs> forward thinking, well, what about twenty years from now? Nobody's going to care about that. Now, another thing is too, with technology keeps changing, and those tower leases are no longer needed. Somebody else is taking all the risk. We would lose that revenue stream anyway. So I think it's a good thing to do. Um, if we can't work out a, uh, uh, a deal with the company we're currently uh, negotiating with, we're going to go to the company that painted our water tank, which is also the same one that handles the leasing work for the cell tower, which is on top of the North Main Street tank well, and offer them, instead of paying the bill, we just let them keep all of the proceeds from the lease payments in exchange for paying both the tanks. Now, if, if, it's, if it's confusing, I'd be glad to go over it again, but look, we, we've been hit with so pretty, it's been hit with so many different things that we have to do. This is the only way that we know of to replenish that fund and have it there in case we have something bad happen. If Pine Street Well is down right now, we're looking at probably twenty five fifty thousand dollars to repair that well. So the cost of paying those two tanks was two hundred twenty six thousand dollars a week. No, it was we the were, first one was one hundred and sixty nine and the second one. We go wait to ask the question. Well, he kind yeah, of opened up yeah. the. Yeah, he <laughs> opened up the discussion. That's not stop. Well, me. I'm sorry, but, I, stop. I, but got, when we got to that point, I'm I not going to remember how many years are left on the list. Because it ties back to what he said. It's over there. So it's just year by year. Yes. Yeah. What you want? It's thirty-eight thousand per year. Well, that's what we get. And right now, are we not going to assess that one issue? Let's <coughs> go. Keep, 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 going. Going. keep going, keep going. Go ahead. So my question is, they want an upfront payment of four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars, and had the lease for a perpetuity. Um, so every ten years we'll get that. Right now, 
assuming they don't go sound loud or no other matter than yeah. sale. Because you get the 38,000. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and when I started as manager, it was around 22,000 a year. So it's increased. Just based yeah. on the usage, the sale of usage through the tower. And they're getting ready to upgrade that. But, there's <coughs> but I'll come back They're going to upgrade question. that tower? I'm sorry. I, I just want y'all to know. But, uh, I'd like to question the guy. Yeah. Mr. Black is over here writing all the questions down. What you want to ask? I'm going to go back to the line item. You just drop the line item beside it. I've gone in uh, uniform to the same 14, chemicals is 6,000, physicals is 100, and storm order hours put 106,000 and 73, and I'll let him explain that. The um, reason that's such an odd number is we use, we use storm order to balance out our, our water sewer fund. So if we have a surplus, you'll find it in storm water. If we, you know, if we get low, you'll find it in the storm water. Also, this, this line item used to be around $100,000 a year before we enacted the storm water fee. Follow the rationale here. Since the storm water fee is being used for the Southwest Darling storm water project, we're having to kick this back up to handle other storm water needs. That's why that number is at 106073. So that gives us some flexibility in working storm water in other parts of town. Um, there's no payment due on the vacuum truck until July of 2019. So that means there's no payment for this budget year for the vacuum truck. So most of the money that's in here can be used for planning with the engineer who we're planning on using um, urban engineering, Bill Urban, who lives here but has an office in Florence and is working with us currently on the on mapping out the West Broad Street stormwater issue where the rubber duck has been out. Two fifty seven, pipe fitting stays the same, four thousand. <clears throat> Vehicle insurance so went to twenty two hundred. Employee training stays a thousand. Professional services stays at twenty seven. Sewer line repair was up to fifty seven four ninety nine. Talk about that a bit, please. We had as Miss Reeves can very vouch right there in her front yard. Um, oh, yeah. We spent we spent that much almost in pay this year to repair not counting what the digging and all the other work was. Probably afforded fifty thousand and just paid them. So we'll probably we'll probably push a hundred thousand dollars in sewer line repair this year. And it's, it's a, you know it's a crap we don't know what it's gonna be. You hope to pray it's a zero, but you gotta have something when you when it falls in. And depending on how how extensive it gets, like the little guy where you gotta go and Syracuse, you, you gotta go a whole block it's but, you know, fortunately, so far, it's been where the guys have been able to do it. It took a little time, but they've been able to do it. Save thousands, save city thousands. I rent a piece of equipment doing this. So. Oh. It worked. It did good. Both things. Yep. And uh, then 279 other operating expenses. So it's the same, same, 7500. The total in expense for 914C is 460672. And in Calvinville, line 380, we got a, I got $25,000 in here. That's for a vehicle, a new truck. Um, machines and equipment stays at $100,000. Miscellaneous equipment, $2,500. Um, down at the bottom, line 400 SRF payback. That's the other long and small one. And this is payment two of 30 at $16,818. 30 years. For what line? That was the match on the EDA bypass sewer project. If we can get a good chance to do another bind for we'll probably throw all this stuff in the bond. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. 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 Sewer collection, 914C. And on page 62, 914T, this is the actual waste treatment plant. And there again, salary is up to 1.5%. And the rest of the stuff through the top is waiting on the figures from insurance. Drop down to line 212, again, we up to 
the 212 to 28,000. Um, the rest of membership dues stay the same. Auto expense in four. Electricity stays at 60. Telephone 300. Machine and equipment 30,000. Building repair 2,000. Stay 63. Paint supply of 100. Um, uniform 600. Chemicals 60,000. 249. The medical supply 1,000. Physical 150. Vehicle insurance went up to two three three two. Building insurance went up to twelve twenty five. Um, employee training on line two sixty four stays at six hundred. Professional services stays at forty five thousand. <coughs> Permits at sixteen hundred dollars. Sewer bed repair powered up to fifty thousand. This is a, eventually we'll have to do some work out on the one of the seven <coughs> sewer beds. Explain what the beds are for and how they use. The beds, the ones that we have, man, we have seven beds, which is a sand bed. Timber acres. The sewer water goes into this bed and drains down in it. It really just goes down to it. It works just like a septic tank. And it goes down about 15 to 16 feet deep in the ground, and then there's a set of pipes to collect it. And by the time it filters through the dirt, it works that way, it just biodegrades. And it goes out, and it'll go through a disinfecting chamber where it's treated with chlorine to make sure there's nothing left in it, no bugs left in it. And then it's, it's after chlorine's removed out of it, and then it discharges the creek. Those beds are actually what does the treat. And over years, the sand works its way out, some of them out through the drains and all that, and we're going to have to probably replace some, some sand and some, start at least in one bed somewhere. And keep the capacity. If you lose capacity, the, the elevation of the dirt goes down. You lose capacity. Something else has concerned us over the years too is it was built. In, the plant was built in 1982. The useful life of those plants is usually 40 to 50 years if you're fortunate. So 40 years is 2022. And it's a great, runs efficient, real reasonable, it's a cheap to operate. As long as they don't come up with some kind of strain <coughs> around. Her. This plant can't happen, and that's always a possibility. But right now, it's a filter. Though. Yeah, it's, it's a big filter. It's working just like a septic tank, except it's going through sand, like a big sand filter. And as it goes down, it's biodegraded and set down. Anybody that would like a tour, yeah. it's not a bad idea to go out there and just eyeball it. It's quite impressive. Um, the technology is very simple, but it, it works. It works for us. We, we produce no sludge. Most plants generate a sludge that you've got to dispose of, pay to get rid of, or something. This makes no sludge. It's, we take we take the tractor and plow it up when it's dry. And where is this? Out on the side of your right. Oh, okay. You see the sign out there? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but any, you know, anybody wants to go anytime, let me know. We'll take you out, take you around. Well, and then another operating expense is four thousand stays the same. And a total of uh, 291.107. And in capital, machines and equipment, 10,000. Miscellaneous equipment stays at 10,000. And that's it with a total of 20 of that, and a grand total of uh, 355, 520. And uh, the sewer, the 914 T, which is the Anybody got questions on page 54? Front page. I'm sorry, what page? Page 54, the first page. Anybody got anything? Page 54, the first page. After going through the person that did have about the salaries and the and they. You got page question on page 54? I was explaining. Yes, I had a question mm -hmm. on page 54, mm -hmm. which was about the salaries and the number of employees. But after reading 101, her, but each, but, every, I, each I, budget, I, 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 I have three budgets. Figure, figure it out. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, what she's saying is the employees are listed. Well, that department at the end of the, the budget detail right. of 56. Mm -hmm. So now that they were to figure it up for each one, each, each category. 
But I did, I know we always say contract O&M. What is that? That is what Davidson Brown does. They are furnishing licensed operators for the well, the water, and the wastewater. And, and, but I see that in each one. That's each one. You got them in well, they got them. We pay them for the water, wastewater. We pay them for all three buttons. Okay. They're doing all, they're doing all the licensed operations. This question comes up a lot. Um, why don't we have people that have those qualifications or licenses? Do you um, that? The average age of a licensed operator in South Carolina is 59 years. Nobody's getting into this. Um, to do it, Florence just up there pay, start and pay at 24 hours an hour. That's a start. He's got a year to make get his certifications, and if they're not, they've terminated at the end of the year. But at that point, they go on up. And what you're gonna get into it? The only way to get one is to buy one. You have to buy it operator, and that's the reason we opened them. Davis Brown saying they have an up their guys' salaries or people's salaries to uh, keep them employed. With that, so Florence don't buy them. Or no other and they're doing what now exactly what they actually operate the water treating the water at the water in the well and then at the waste treatment plant they run all the tests they do everything related to the waste treatment plant. they test the water for whatever pathogens they do that they, they run the filters backwash it they check the operation they have to all kind of logs then they have to do the dehab tests and stuff that they get. you have a problem at night after hours their own call they come we call them they come they, it, it's on the remote it, it calls their phone they get an alert on their phone if a well goes down whatever. And, okay so this okay that sounds good what kind of license does that require yeah the wells require a c water mm -hmm. and a wastewater requires a b biological waste mm -hmm. let me ask you a question um but once upon a time we had hodge hodge out there mitch hodge and mitch hodge and he was testing so what's the difference and what he did then and what Davidson Brown do now. They're doing the same thing. Lab certification got so critical that it cost to maintain it because DHEC has to come in and certify, recertify everything. Mm -hmm. And also, if you do your own testing, you always got that question. Did they pencil it? Mm -hmm. Did they have a legitimate test? Was the answer really correct? And by using a third party to test it, the city of Darlington has you know, we don't have anything in it. I mean, DHEC's not going to question it because we didn't yeah, write the numbers. Yeah. So you're using a third party mm -hmm. to, you, to create the data for DHEC. Before you came on board, before Davis and Brown came on board, we were constantly getting recommended by DHEC. Davis and Brown's been operating over eight years now. We have not failed an inspection. So how many? We were constantly failing before. Oh, okay. So how many Davis and Brown employees we have? There's usually two here, two. two here a day. Now on the weekend, they usually cover by one now. This is working seven days a week, 365 days a year. That they have somebody. It's, it's not a wheel. Yeah. We don't have to worry about it. <laughs> you're holding it. We're not paying any of these. Yeah, with, with this, uh, with the Davis and Brown, this is them furnishing their vehicles. I mean, Davis and Brown furnishes the vehicles. They furnish all the benefits and insurance. All we pay is this seat. So we have no liability to the Davis and Brown as far as operators. And they've got enough, they've got like 12, 14 on staff, so they've got one out, they close and they rotate weekends, they'll, uh, like two of the guys work in Florence during the week, and they'll come in and volunteer work one out of four weekends, you know, for the extra money to make overtime. Okay, so, so that's how much. If we were to hire them ourselves, hire all the different um, certifications we say we need, what's our cost difference? No. Well, you're going, you're going, you're probably to keep one, you're going to pay forty to fifty thousand dollars a year. Then you got to furnish them the vehicle. You know, we've got to cover the benefit, and you got to have two of minimum. Really, need more because nobody's going to work three hundred sixty-five days a week a year, or even physically. Yeah. And uh, you cover it seven days a week. One's out sick. You really need at least three. Well, we got the lab cost. Yeah. To cover the the full example. Well, so the lab, actual physical lab, costs them two sixty five. 
So, so what I'm looking at, yeah. it is, it's like over 200000 that we pay every year, but they are providing all of those things. They're providing all. And you figured out at least the day is going rate and fighting to keep operators, this is the day. Okay. Uh, more and more people are going to it. They've got more, get more and more business. They've they taken over uh, fiber, what was well at the yeah. start of their, they have totally taken that over the operation. Because they don't want to try to hire a fine. Because all their people left when they closed the plant. Right. They're either reformed or retired. It's really becoming a, a bad situation because, like, say, you start to pay, you know, $12, $15 an hour, and that's attraction for somebody to go to school and take three or four exams and uh, make that kind of money in the hot sun, maybe get sewer on, whatever, versus. You go to Walmart, what Walmart starts with like $11 an hour, and you work in air conditioning with good benefits. Children's Boulevard, you talked about the gas station over here, how you spam it now. It's critical, you know. Well, we don't know, but nobody can predict, you know, it might run for more years. But the concern is that they, how we're telling about an app night, it looks like it's actually the Masonic is coming. To the track supplier, area. Try to exactly that on the Sonic. Location, no other house by or in that area between the track and supply. That's more sewer. Water, the restaurants run a lot of water, clean and washing. All of that's going to go into Joe Lewis. Everything out there goes through Joe Lewis. So we got to have another pump there for the business. Well, we need, it needs to be yeah, bigger and it needs to be rebuilt. Would it be in that same spot? Yeah, or adjacent to it, right in the right in Probably 30 years. It's that's, that's the end of this year? Uh, yeah, it's, it's like I mean, like I say, we patch controls and the control is eat up, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's corroded, you know, this, the atmosphere of sewer is corrosive. Well, it eats the concrete up, so I'm sure the inside of the concrete structure is eating up. Frankie and them had to replace Two pieces of the pipe in it here a few months ago to get it back in operation. And the only way we were able to do that, solar septic tank service, stayed here with a fleet of trucks overnight and pumped it and hauled it to the West Street. It cost me $5,500 for a night hauling. Okay. And that was a bargain because Ronnie cut them. He said, I can't charge you what I should charge you. Now, Fred, if we can't justify the rear rent based on the economic development, because that pump station supports the LMI area, we would probably qualify for CBGT if that's something we want to If we can get enough interest, a lot of it crosses <coughs> the main street up to about uh, Bay Island, comes across Main and comes back. We can qualify. But that's just another option. Yep. For the well, the um, Ms. Latham knows the CDBG rate better than I do. Whichever, we, well, we might be we can put it for both. energy efficient pumps and also based it on the capacity because we got to say we can't say we rebuild it we got to say we're increasing capacity well you can't say increase capacity but yeah. you're right you can't say and we're not rebuilding yeah we're not repairing we got yeah so, so you're right you got we have to just be true we got to justify it we, we need a large well, well, we, we can do it yeah. but don't we have an issue with road fuel also yeah and that's what i say do we try to get if we could go for the five hundred thousand and use it for some of the pumps so the other the good thing is the city's match is 10 percent so on a half a million you get off of 50 dollars so, so. so should we be looking at repairing or replacing oh well we're replacing we replace we to re yeah we we can't we say replace. we're repaired because not for a grand anyway we got we got to rebuild it larger i understand larger. that but i'm just saying oh uh, well if it goes down if it goes down we have to re rebuild off replacing yeah and being if y'all give us the guidance, we'll go ahead and do the work for the CDBG and go ahead and submit that. When's CBG go in? September, doesn't it?
September. Both of them September. Well, one thing, you want to do what you need to do now because those businesses come and we not prepared for it. That's yeah, going to I mean, pull them back. It's going to be devastating. It but, is. I mean, everybody saw the press that Florence got when they didn't have water for two days. Right. Yeah. So we don't we don't want that on the TV. Mm -hmm. That we had to shut all our new main industry, or not industry, all our new businesses mm -hmm. down yeah. because of sewer. Sewer. Pump station fell off. That, that would reflect on any new development company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We get that black eye on that, yeah. and they go. That's what I'm saying. This is our growth area. We know it. We've got to do what we can to do. I'm not telling. Okay. Growth Hill. We have to replace that pump session. It needs work now. How old is that one for you? I'm just. Probably in the 80s. I think it was switched over when the treatment plant went out. It was switched over. You could. Quit old plant that was what 82? I think it was 82. But they, they, they had to upgrade it in 89 after you go. Yeah. So that was the last major work that was done there, I believe. So that's 28 years, 29 years? That was the old that was the old treatment plant. Treatment plant. Yeah. 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 How much does it cost us to take a chance on getting whatever Rio grants that we can get? Filling out the application and that kind of stuff. What does it go? Uh, I think. How much is it? How much is it going to cost to put together packages that need to go to see if we can get the application? The application itself, my fee is I think it's three thousand dollars to submit the application itself. Now, coupled with that, we're going to have to have a preliminary engineer. Depending on who the engineer is, I've had one engineer who work with me and didn't charge much of anything. And the, the other engineering cost with the preliminary engineering report could range in well from seven eight. I've seen them up to ten thousand dollars. That's what the application says. <laughs> They've done our worst work. Excuse me. Water sewer work. Pork rind. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> yeah. get you one. <laughs> so we were looking at 15 to 20 years of possible oh, expenditure. Yeah. Training would be way too high. I made a contract with an engineer to earn that much. Would you say 15 to 20? 20 what? Engineer. I'll tell them why. To file the application. $15,000 to submit the application <clears throat> because of the engineering work and the development of uh, program for Janie to do her thing. Okay. Are you saying fifty thousand? I'm saying my fee to pull the whole application together, work with an engineer, and make sure the engineer preliminary engineer report is tight and responsive and pull all that together. My fee is only three thousand dollars. The engineer I work with engineers who literally charge literally almost nothing. But I've seen the engineering fees range from anywhere to seven up to ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand is on the high side. So on that very high side, you should be paying about ten, thirteen thousand. It's not a major engineering problem. I mean, really, you know, right here size of this room. If y'all don't want that, we'll stick. We'll slap that on the June agenda to go ahead and approve. Get to put that in the picture. Well, I think we should. Be, we should. I think you were saying we could do. We could apply for two different grants, right? Well, with the approval, then what I would do is come and work with the city manager, work with Freddie, and figure out what's the most optimal application to submit. Because, like Freddie was saying, some of the <laughs> some of the agencies are going to have certain requirements. So we'll look at should we go RIA or should we go CDBG? Should we go for one pump station and are we going to need to improve some of the underground sewer? And do we have force mains and do we want to upgrade those force mains to gravity fed lines? Because the life expectancy then, you know, it's almost like 20 times. So anytime you can get rid of a force man and put in a gravity line, you want to do that. So we'll look at all those types of options. And then, you know, you'll make you'll bring that back to you or Howard and Freddie will make a decision in terms of what's the optimum type of application package to submit. 
and which is the best agency to submit based on the time. For real, like Freddie was saying, in the fall, you're looking at economic development, but you gotta partner with a business, and that business has to sign a contract, really, with rural infrastructure authority to say, I guarantee for the next five years, I'm gonna bring in and we get a half a million dollars, right? Would they have to commit to 50 jobs, 50 new jobs over that period of time? So you actually have to partner with the industry who's going to commit to certain things in terms of economic growth and development. But there are other types of ways we can we can get that in without having to have that commitment as well. So we, can we apply for both of the grants? It's a possibility. The council will go in that we can do this. Just depend on what they want to do. Then we'd be looking at 20,000, more or less, 2025. Well, you, would do, you would do engineering, we'd have to do one up. engineering if they did two applications. So we got <coughs> two applications, so we could talk Probably about 15. 10 to 15 still. 15, 18, something like that. Okay. I think Next we need to look at both things. We'll see, we'll see if we can get to it. Yeah. Okay, we're going I've got this pump station on the same page as 59. I'm on 59. Um, yeah, I, you, you haven't got 55 yet. Y'all skip it. I'll I think you skipped it. I see you did. Well, does anybody have any other questions? I wanted to ask on um, page 55, um, 264, employees training. How many employees went to training last year and how much did that $3,500 go? Um, Sean went. William went. Last year he went. <coughs> They, the guys used to rotate Frankie since part of them went here and part of them just so we can keep the city covered. Okay. And a lot depends on who what Frankie didn't want to go last year. Frankie didn't want to go. Okay. So he, let, he sent William in his place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Nothing that's on that page, right? We want to go next. Well, you said something about Pine Street. Pine Street, where? Just down right yeah. there. Motor pump right up. About those uh, <coughs> antennas and stuff on the tanks. It, it would be possible if we sold the North Main Street that we could have an option on maybe developing that same business on those other tanks. Well, it's, it's listed now. They have the same company has a sign on it and they keep brokering it, you know, but so far nobody's expressed interest in that. Okay. One thing, the elevation is a little higher on North Main at the time. But, uh, what I was getting at is if we sell off the North Main, do we still have an option to Yes. Keep that we other. Can we, sell the other. we can develop that business on our own. We also like we sell it all for a non-competition agreement on. Please tell me what you're talking about. Kevin would. That's what you were going to say. If you were going to sell the lease rights, wouldn't you want a non-competition agreement? Okay. Okay. What are we talking about? Selling the cell tower rights. <laughs> if I was going to buy the rights to transmit off of that cell tower, I would want hey, to Are we have, just talking advertisement on the time? No, this is not the cell tower. Okay, the cell phone is cell phone. Okay. You see, the antenna is your cell phone. Antenna. So if, if I'm paying you $500,000, I'm going to want a, a non competition agreement to keep the city from going back out okay. and competing with me. So I don't know whether we can double broker okay, but or not. Okay, but before you get to them deep kind of detail, <laughs> I want to get to just, we got a, the signal, the, the antenna. We got a water tower, and we lease space in that water tower to an antenna company. And the antenna company pays us $38,000 a year. To do that. To do right. that. To be able to, to be have our their antenna up there. The pays to put the antenna on top of that. Okay, I got that. And then the question is, do we want to sell out forever for five hundred thousand dollars to Verizon? To Verizon, for to, instance. To, uh, so open it up to other people. people. Yeah, but we're getting thirty-eight thousand right now every year. So every ten or eleven years. But we don't have a contract. We have a one-year renewable contract. So we don't know after one year whether they would come back to us say we would like to do this again a second year, a third year, a fourth year. And what Howard's talking about is there's a possibility of technology changing so that instead of bouncing off of that cell tower, they're bouncing off of satellites or something else.
to, to get that same kind of coverage, and then we would no longer be able to, we wouldn't have something worth leasing anymore. Well, have, we had, have there been any other companies we got showing one interest? We've got one that no, there's another company that called us about buying out the lease. Yes, right. Okay. <coughs> they, they the number they quoted us was upfront payment four hundred fifty to five hundred thousand dollars right now. Of course, but okay. Oh, okay. But um, but nothing after that. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, they so, just so we might get. They say four hundred fifty to five, which means they might pay six. Oh, oh, so they like got to be specific. Well, we sent we sent them the contract and everything related to the current deal that we have. They did their revenue projections and they were comfortable just making like a verbal offer between four fifty and five hundred. But I've been putting them off just to have a meeting with y'all tonight to tell you what's going on before we got any more involved in the negotiation. Didn't they just upgrade the antenna? Didn't somebody they just working on? They're working on it right now. They're so. running the fiber. Where we had all the issues with them running fire with the historical and everything and is they gonna put you know upgrade 5g and everything's coming so they're gonna have to that tower you know, upgrade that awesome. so if they're investing hundreds of thousands of dollars into this tower i don't think we have a worry of them leaving in the next couple of years Come out there, but right. Well, right. yeah I'm, I'm well, like, maybe probably not in the next couple i'm just wondering in 10 years what's with what it's done since I started practicing law, yeah, uh, and with what since Kevin started practicing law, I just don't know what technology can do. I think you're right. We've got probably two, three, four years where we wouldn't have to worry about it. But I'm just not smart enough to know what's going to come after that. Yeah, we just have to wait and see. But I think that if they're talking at this point, four fifty-five, that there's some room in there. Right now, to get it's more money out of her. How much I don't know. Which, and, and to me, when somebody has been, you know, have been so supportive, before we go on to something else, else, make it look pretty good. I like the rise to charge. We need to finish with okay. what we're on here before we branch on to something else. We're getting off. Well, I don't see. Y'all brought it up. I don't know. This, this All right, um, page, page 59, section 255. We have the increase for the stormwater. Anybody got any questions on 56? Any questions on 56? Anything off of 57? No. Okay, now 50, 58. Now 59. All right, um, line item 255, stormwater. Yeah. I thought when we created the stormwater fee, um, we did this to get this line item out of this budget. Why is it back in? I think I went over that a little bit earlier. You yeah. kind of did. I, I'm just curious, but from a budget standpoint and a legality standpoint, we created the fund to get out of here. Well, with the funds being used to pay for one project now, and we have stormwater needs over, over the rest of the town, I don't know of any other way to, to do it unless you want to raise the stormwater fee itself to generate more income no i just thought we, we were getting it out of this fund because i would assume it would have its own budget but the entire thing <laughs> is just going to for the payment for the project so right. you can't really have there's no there's no cushion no, no budget i guess there's it's no budget no and so what we've, what we've tried to do is to, to blunt the impact to the water sewer fund and the general reserve fund by our general fund by putting one position in in water sewer and one position in, in the general fund um, and the payment will be split when it's due july 2019 the same way and it, it won't the impact just won't be on this department or on the general fund completely and as we talked about earlier this piece of equipment the jet back equipment will be used by the water sewer department also because they have needs for it well, that's why we'll get ready to, with the truck coming, but how are we paying out of that? Out in that? The, the, the truck is not in this budget because it's not delivered until July 2018. First payment won't be due until July 2019. And what it's would that $44,000 a year for 10 years. The cost is $371,000. Right, but I mean, it'll come from this time yeah. well, next year. Yeah. Okay. In what area? I'm just saying. Half what what half my half of it. So we'll be dealing with it in here. Definitely half of it in here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's fine.
Line item 278. But don't get off the storm water. Right. I'm not. Oh, okay. What kind of revenue is our storm water fees generating now? $133,000 a year. But it doesn't matter. I mean, it's, no, it's, it's all being spent. Right, it's all going towards the payback. All the storm water. Street. Uh, for the for that property, oh, uh, <clears throat> plus the um, Sunday alcohol. So, oh, don't care. I'm going to save that news for the other line. Please don't say no way. Nothing else today. Please go ahead. Line item 278, sewer line <laughs> repair, fifteen thousand dollar increase. Was that HVAC rental cost? Two seventy eight. Mm -hmm. Two seventy eight. We yeah. just we just up. Just okay. Yeah, it's for safety. Yeah. All right. We flipped it. Uh, a lot of times that's the balance. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything on 60? Well, I, I got a question for 380. Okay. What's what's on what's page? Page? Oh, Just get on page 59. Oh, the new truck. Mm -hmm. Are we purchasing a new truck or what new truck are we referring to? The back truck that yeah, we're paying for. We have, oh, we'll pick up. Oh, pick up. Oh, oh, three, that's a new pickup, just a pickup. You usually get one truck a year. I try to buy one a year to keep on one short now. You did you just order a new one for yeah, one on the just got one. William blowed up at a treatment plant, so we're trying to get a replacement. <coughs> trying to get me a tire. Okay, page page sixty. Any question on page sixty? Any questions on page sixty? <laughs> Uh, you did you put like 59? I said, you didn't know. Oh, ain't that no okay. Let me turn it on. Okay, let's go to um, 62. You said, you said that the waste treatment plants near its life expectancy, we've got what, another 8, 10 years? We're lucky we'll have 10 years. <coughs> 10 years. What it's going to, I mean, we got well, growth. Well, it depends on the growth. It depends on how much growth we have. Mm -hmm. Our restaurant, we're not, we're not increasing large percentages a year. Uh, and as long as we don't, the heck doesn't come up with any new parameters that we can't, or that we have to modify to meet. If we keep doing the repair work on it, it may go on indefinitely, but I mean, until it reaches capacity. What bed you know, is the worst? Uh, Four is having some problems. Three has got a clay build up in it. So okay. The, one of them probably either be four was the last one. Probably be three. Bed three that we probably. Three. How yeah. many beds we have? Seven. 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 That really, really eight. One of them split in half, but I don't know why they made it that way when they started. Number one is an A and a B, so, so really eight. Six big ones, six large ones, and one that's got two small. It's 82 acres out there that were purchased from Harold Timmons in 1981. Probably 25 of the acres is usable. The rest is just not. Drops off in the yeah. Oh, <coughs> now, are we still shipping sewage to Florence? That's nothing, nothing going to Florence because the oil mill down. There's nothing to go to Florence. Yeah, that's what I. So we've got that. We've got. We got that, that, that option, options available if it's there, and we will need it one day. I mean, we no we have large growth on the industry one to locate on the bypass, then we've got that capacity on the bypass. But the problem when we get out of the sewer business is that we don't control our own fate anymore. Somebody else does and they'll charge whatever they want. Yeah, so we'll, we'll keep that plant as long as we can. And if it's still here in 2030, we'll, we'll run it until we can't run it anymore. Yeah, even if you get to the point, you can't put the 90% out of here. We're going 10% the farms. It still will still operate that and way. We will have the option too of anything that if we get a new industry and it, something that causes a problem from a a chemical standpoint that we can handle on our plant that goes to farms. And that's another thing, John, for us to keep our eye on and keep a close analysis on, on that in terms of what's our OMM cost versus what's a new plant plus what's new technology that's available to bring that on because that's also considered infrastructure so we can get grant funding. And real because Bonnie really likes to team with CDB sheet. She doesn't like to team someone in rural development, but that's also another funding option. But I think it's wise to do exactly what you're doing and keep a close eye on that because that that facility is old and the technology, quite frankly, although it's working well, is 
very old technology. And the cost for a new treatment plant, what, seven million bucks? Where are we going to get that from? <laughs> so, you know, eventually we'll be out of the sewer business one day. Let's just hope it's not anytime soon. And we'll keep that money as long as we can. <laughs> Six and three. I checked this in through all of the professional services. What's that? Uh, Six and five. That is any kind of engineer in our lab work. So that's not under Davidson Brown? It could be Janie, it could be Irvin, any okay. engineering service or any professional service that we have to pay for that. Okay. Any consulting service, also all the lab. Any lab testing we've done, it's come about as professional. Oh, okay. Those expenditures are pretty close to this, or not that lower than that. We went on. Without the grants, we hadn't done that much, we hadn't done much engineering this year because of, due to being broke, we quit doing a lot of grants. <laughs> We're trying to recover from too many grants, right? All right. Anything else on 6364? No, no, the top, okay. Um, that's it. Any other questions? Everybody already asked all the questions. Okay. Water, water sewer capital uh, improvement plan, I think that can be pretty much. Yeah, it was past leading around. And I'll give you an idea of some of the things that are on the drawing board that we're going to eventually have to address. And a lot of them we've already talked about as we went through. Pretty good. Oh, okay. Are you just explaining what we yeah, this is like I say, a lot of we done. Uh, we we did a little bit on number one, Grove Hill, the main main. That's the old treatment plant. Mm -hmm. um, that's Mayor Hines brought up. That was repaired here a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. had, and we spent a bunch of money because we had there again bring a company out of North Carolina with a pump and stay on a bypass pump for six to twenty something thousand dollars rent a pump. Everybody know where Grove Hill is. And down the hill in the back of the cemetery. Yeah, right. it's exactly. Got to right. go through the cemetery. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. But the guys don't love to go out there at night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't blame. I don't blame them. <laughs> and it's now a split play. But you don't know who else behind that. They might be some lies yeah, folks behind that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Main pump. The pumps have been, they were back there before we built the new treatment plant. So okay. these pumps, now they've been rebuilt, some of them have been replaced. But they're antique, and one day we'd like to replace them with some new, large, if we did this grant, some new larger pumps, and also energy efficient pumps that would save a lot of electricity. Mm. Uh, waste treatment plant, we talked about number two, working on a bed. You know, Joe Lewis pump station is the one we renovate on. Allen Street pump stations. There again, so I'm preaching the point of falling apart. Mm -hmm. um, All right. Five is that's the country club, the back of the sewer that was promised. Mr. Seeger said it was promised sewer 30 some years ago. <laughs> what is Samuson? I've never heard that name. That's a, what is that? Street or part of it? Subdivision. Indian name. Indian name. All, those, all those streets right there. Airport. Yeah, well, I know, but I've never, I've never seen Samuson's name out there. Yeah, I have. Go look. It's on the main flat. It's oh. simply the subdivision yeah, name as opposed to street. It's something new every day. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then the other, um, uh, the next page of the budget, uh, that's the items of is number one. Everybody knows everything's getting over. It's just like me and everybody in the room and everything out here is getting over. Like I said, the sewer plant was built in 82. Pine Street, the, the, newest, the newest well was built, put in in 1987. So, and then uh, we've got uh, two things we'll talk to bring up is uh, SCDOT requirements for squeaky cash. 
and the bottom line is the uh, aging workforce all around the industry. That's something we'll have to address with our staff is because most of our staff has been with that department for 20, 25 years or more. They are long in the tooth and not much hair on top. Most of them, uh, while they're physically able, they are breaking down physically, or mentally able, sorry. They're, some some cases they're not physically able all the time. Yeah, I mean, it's getting, I mean, it's bad to sleep in it's down and not down, but they're having the dopamine now, you know, in like fact, we had one tried a while back. Trying to pull muscle on that back, so it's, it's, it's learning they're having to do teamwork. And there's no good answer for that either. Uh, uh, small bags. How long do you allow them to stay on the light duty? I guess it depends on what the doctor says. Yes, yeah, it depends on you know the release. Larry Brunson came back last week, released his own restrictions. 20 pounds. He can't lift anything. He can't do anything. He can't lift over 20 pounds. Uh, what about the other one that had the back problem? What's his name on? Um, we talking talk about Waverly? No, not no. Waverly. Doing Street Park. Yeah. Uh, Rufus Park. Rufus, I believe. What are you talking about? Probably shouldn't be talking specifically yeah, yeah, about yeah. specific employees and more in this being taken. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay. okay, go ahead on. What's what, the next one? <laughs> Is so uh, the dead in the US 52 bypass tank is what we as we're going to eventually, as we grow in the bypass area, we're going to be approached at needing another work, an elevated work tank. Oh. And especially if, uh, say, a hotel, any, any large group developed back there, <coughs> somewhere we're going to eventually gonna have to look at another a grant or some, some way to put up a new work, another, a third work time. You know the area by Wine Street out there? Um, it's on the left, one of the farms. About 30 acres back there that's owned by a family. They're, oh, yeah. they're yeah. willing to turn, they want to turn that into residential. So the good. What? The James family? No, uh, Clanton. Um, so that's something that may be on the table the next few years. That's right there where we have an easier comes Yes, and, and we're contiguous with part of that property. Okay. So we get that's above. My city that's, that's my city well, the back of it is on the back side over there, behind um, where the uh, Dallas place is. That, all that track it, 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 does, it goes up against it. So we get that in, and then we're at Wine Street, and 30 acres. There's no telling how many houses you put up there. I tell you, our best years are ahead of us. So they continue to red red now to get it. Yeah, we. There's just a, it, it's, it's divided roughly by a small uh, brook of water, that's all. I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm yeah. good, but that's, you know, Joyce, no step into mm -hmm. me. Um, but that's what I'm behind on, on McKeever. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody don't want to do I mean, we can't get them in, or do we want Are you talking about Sunrise Acres? Well, that's Judy. No, right behind our camper. On, on um, well, that, that's, that's, that's part of what we're looking at. We'd like to get camper in, but camper would only come in. Um, See right. this? Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we will okay. get that. We will well, well, we'll do, we'll do an economic <laughs> development so when session at some point in time. Right. Yeah, yeah, because that's the whole story. He didn't know that. What do you want to do? I don't know. I have to ask Alex. Yeah. Because the only reason I was breaking down a fire, but a family member. Okay, that let's go to the next one. Yeah, let's go to the next one. What are you saying? He got his. Yeah. 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 Where y'all, Mr. Kinsley? Water sewer rate. <laughs> Council last year voted to do a 3% rate increase. Oh, okay. Okay. Everybody have a copy? They're they coming around. <laughs> Um, and just what this is, this is the rate sheet, and also on the second page, uh, there's a comparison sheet to uh, adjacent to county ward and sewer mm -hmm. and some of the local communities or towns around the uh, What this, the work, the base for the bill will go up 54 cents. So it's not it's an astronomical jump. Mm -hmm. 
You have estimated revenue generated? About $50 million. Do we need to leave it where it's at? We need to increase well, it. We're surviving. We're not gaining any, but we're we're in the, still in the bottom, definitely in the bottom half of the rates around us. Uh, you look at the rates on the second page. Same page. You can see the comparison. Uh, uh, and most of these, I show hours. Uh, Donovan County Water Store. The last I heard, they're going up at least five percent. Uh, so these these are not factored in any rate increases coming in. I mean, this current and the new budgets are not in the comparison. Well, this time, and I know you can't get people to Florence. No. We can't no. hunt for people to Florence here. You know. Well, really, on water, we can compete with Florence. It's just a sewer. Yeah. 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 If we're going by this rate. Because yeah. yes. that first column is, is what's happening now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what you propose is in the second column? No, the mm -hmm. second column. Sewer, sewer is the second column. Sewer is the second column. The only one that's got the proposed oh. one is ours at the top. Mm -hmm. the first. Oh, okay. I didn't even work. This one. Thank you. So, uh, is that what I need? <coughs> Donald's well, County. I, yeah, I guess. I guess. Timbers don't have water though. Farmers still have Farmers still got it all. Farmers got it. Farmers got it. Farmers got it. Thirty-two dollars and seventy-three I guess my question is, projection-wise, we're not going to get rich by no means. I'm talking about for we need an increase of a small percentage more. Probably. Yo, let's listen. Let's if, listen. If we based anything, I'd go back to back to one of you remember Wayne Chapman when he was on campus. He pushed until we finally got the capital fee. It's raised that capital fee that goes into the capital reserve that would help replace borderline wells, whatever you needed. Just look at somewhere in the future up in that oh, above the two dollars. It's been two dollars since we implemented it. Whenever that was, I don't know how many years you have to look back. How many years? That's Rather than doing the basic rate and put it where that way it would be designated to uh, to a capital project <coughs> to build a to build a bank account. But the rates that we're charging now is that going to reflect in these grants and things that we're applying for? Are we okay? Yeah, they will look at them, you know, and that's <coughs> hopefully the revenue so far has met the requirements. Sooner or later, you know, that's where. Uh, I know Lamar was really yeah. great in it. Is that if you get your revenue gets too low, then Re or whoever's going to dictate you've got to do a rate increase if you want to maintain <coughs> eligibility for grants. Um, we, we need to stay ahead of that. Yeah. We don't okay. want to get to where we can't qualify for a grant. Yeah. Right. Okay. Because uh, you know, they have several, several located. Lamar was one of them. It seemed like the Johnsonville somewhere, but anyway, they had to do. 12, 15 percent rate increases to get above that. that yeah. So they could have just like yeah, I'd, I'd rather do three, four percent at a time, time, you know, and do it over. You know, than do, you know we had to do right before I came here what, 20, 25 percent, yeah. and that's the that's the point that he got into this morning. They couldn't do that, and they were, it was more or less mandated to do a 25 percent rate. Mm -hmm. so, what what the agencies would do is they are the rates throughout the state of South Carolina. Yeah, this this rate, real. I get this off real website. They put the, every year after July when the budgets come out, is real. Send all of us a questionnaire. Give us your your rates, or if you haven't had increase, check it just same as it was, and base it on what five get five thousand gallons of water will cost and what five thousand gallons of sewer. And they get that from everybody. Everybody, every municipality has to participate. And any nonprofits that will, or special districts, a lot of them don't. I know Chesterfield Rural Water that publish theirs. Some of the other ones that are astronomically high won't publish. Just the idea: Chesterfield Rural Water base water, just for water, is fifty-five dollars. So you have to submit the rate as part of the application yeah. itself. The last couple of years, the rates have been fine. They won't deny approval of a grant, but what they may do is make it conditional if your rates they consider are significantly low. Because what they're looking for is sustainability. 
Are you having enough revenue coming in to maintain this half a billion dollar infrastructure improvement? So I don't think think it's going to be a major problem. Quick, quick story. When we did that, that huge rate increase, the next year we had this gentleman from from the city of Columbia, Water Sewer, came down here and ran a seminar for us, and then he blasted us because he said that's unheard of. You should never raise your rates that high. Next year, I think the city of Columbia is bankrupt because they weren't keeping up with what they were doing. <laughs> we still operate. Uh, Columbia borrows heavily from their water sewer department for their general fund, like forty million dollars over like eight years. We stopped doing, we stopped uh, borrowing from the water sewer fund and not paying it back in 2011. We haven't done that since. All that two dollars that goes into the capital account, what amount of money have we got in the capital account now? It was a little over 600000 and I got figures from Gloria a few weeks ago. We were paying the water tank to come out of that. That's 160, close to 170 from North Main, and then we'll have about two that will come out for um, Pine Street. So, so we'll cut it. And it would be down 350 or so. And we're going to consolidate one account that we had for the EDA bypass sewer rent project for 108000 in that account. We'll put that back in his reserve, so we'll be looking for between 350 and 400. We collect probably. Eighty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, it's about seven thousand or so. Seven, seven to seventy-five hundred a month goes into it. Should, if we're looking at this three percent increase in our general rates, should we look at increasing at two dollars by twenty-five cents, fifty cents, or something like that to try? Because I look at items one through on this handout, it scares, it scares me, yeah. and so I think we got to start um, building towards having more money on hand when these things break down that we know we're going to break down. So we were like 1.2 million and storm come to 15, Matthew came through and then the EDA project and the this grant work and without we don't have a I'm sorry I can't hear this. Two years. 25 cent wouldn't be bad to start up with. <coughs> And then go up another 25 cent next year. So we can get some of these things done because um with everything collapsing, because I think they had a sewer collapse back behind my house the other day. Oh. A sewer collapse. And I'm just thinking it collapsed back behind my house. Is it going further than the others collapse going? Well, what we as you can see from uh, Syracuse and Tallulah lately uh -huh. is we end up going Basically, a manhole or a block. Right, that's what, about that's, what feet. that's what I'm saying. It's because it keeps the, going. The pipe, you go, you dig, 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 and there's no good pipe. And mm -hmm. on Tallulah, when Frankie got about two thirds down, Jeez, I said, Frankie, you better well quit looking for pipe. Pipe's cheap. Go ahead, let Woodrow dig the ditch mm -hmm. and put you pipe in. Do you have a log of all that on your computer where you can, if, if I came and asked you, how many lines have been placed on Evers Avenue to Lula Street? Can you tell me by going on the computer? No, I don't, they're not logged on there. I have to dig. Mm, have to dig? No, I mean, I have to not dig them. Not literally <laughs> dig. I have to work on it to get it up. Yeah. So, so where do you document that kind of stuff? I mean, A lot of it is work mm -hmm. orders or you know, uh -huh. stuff like paying industrial payment to pay. So we don't want, we're not maintaining a paper trail on the, on the computer system? Of course we have a paper yeah. trail, just a paper trail. No, I'm saying on the computer, or we're not maintaining the paper trail. The work orders and all is on the work order system on the computer. I think the question that keeps coming up here, maybe, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, we don't have anything, not just that you we could show you, but mm -hmm. mapped out this what's been replaced and what's not. Right, we have so that? yeah, like that. <clears throat> I can get it. It's not probably. It's not like on a spreadsheet that I could pull it up and just give me the repair. But don't, we should generate. Don't we should generate some kind of spreadsheet so that way, if if the question comes up, what was replaced last year or how many was replaced, and we don't have to dig in. We have to dig. We don't have to dig in something. Yeah. I mean, that could be easy to do. Yeah, I'm Excel, sure, I'm sure Excel the DMV spreadsheet. Could, it has that has that information. It's just a matter of requesting them to put the proper format mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. It'd be easier yeah. for you. You just get hit, yeah. hit the button, go to Excel, and it pops up. It, it may be also that we are going to have to look at our computer system. Yeah, yeah. you got Excel and all that stuff. Yeah. We, I'm not so sure that we've got the most up-to-date computer system. 
So sometimes we, we may not have it, but you we, can push. You know, well, he just he just confirmed. We don't have updated. We don't, we don't have Google Doc. We ain't got updated. We don't even have emails. <laughs> okay, we got Windows 8. Come on, we had some iPad system yeah, boxes. That's past. <laughs> well, let me tell you how old mine is. You get Google Doc offset of the whole. But I can tell you what I. What I'm looking at, like you're doing, whatever these work orders are, that they should be compiled somewhere, mm -hmm. whether you're writing it in something, so that you would be able to get back to that. That's I don't care how you do it, but whatever these work orders should not just be a stack, but be somewhere where yeah. you can tell. That's what I'm. Yeah. That's what I'm asking. And I can compile a, a lot of them would be on my monthly reports. Okay. But it would be a matter of going back and. And get, they're not on, like Carolyn said, they're not on my Excel spreadsheet or mm -hmm. any kind of spreadsheet. But if you got any computer system and mine is so old, I still you got oh, an XP. And, and I got XP, so you know good and well. And I can do it. I got an Excel spreadsheet. So yeah. it's, uh, they might have capital funds there. It would raise it 50 cents. That's only $6. Right. If you raise it a dollar, it's only $12. I'm not one for well, raising taxes. But if we raise it a dollar, it would be another forty thousand dollars a year. Be one hundred forty thousand a year. We'd be expecting in. And we had to let that fund sit. We started collecting that in '06 or '07, and we finally got to a million dollars in 2013. So it takes a while to build it up. We we have really knocked that thing down with all these different grant projects we worked on the last eight or nine, thirty years. Well, so, I can say that would be cheaper on the on the. Uh, Residents, if we did that, we would be raising any more percentages on the water bill. Right. And, that, and like you say, that would be generating funds to go to a specific rather than getting lost in the water. <coughs> but then again, REA and CDBG doesn't look at the capital fund. Like such a <laughs> so we so probably, probably need to do them both. Yeah, we're but maintaining those rates at three percent a year. We're yeah, we do the rates at three percent and put yeah. the dollar on the capital. The rates that they tell it does include the capital fund. Oh, when really? I do the report, they they say add cap. You know, when you calculate your base, you add me in and your base per five thousand. If you got a capital fee, Ms. Latham, Ms. Latham, you want to say something? Yeah, one of my observations in going through the budget, I didn't see anything for IT or information technology. Oh, great. I can I can address that. We are not satisfied with the current IT provider. No, I'm I'm not talking about emails and stuff like that. I'm talking about for your operations for your OMF. Because as we're doing projects now, we're getting as built drawings. So we oh, I'm now sorry. we now have the ability. We're getting as built. And one of the things that Howard, you know, made sure we did was we get a set of as-built drawings. So everything that goes underground, all the infrastructure in the city of Darlington now, the engineer is required to get the construction contract to get certified as-built drawings, and they come back to us. So we now will know where every piece of underground piping, whether it's water, sewer, or storm water, the elevations, the locations of the manholes, all. We need to be able to digitize that to, to yeah. make up. And because if we start building that now, a lot of the problems that Freddie and his staff are having when they go out to locate things, all of that should be computerized. Computerized, yes. So if you guys could consider allocating some funding in your budget to start building that database. Now, rural infrastructure, and this is a problem that I learned I, almost all of my clients in rural um, South Carolina have this same challenge. Their systems are old, but they haven't had the technology or the staff to keep up and to build that IT. And they go out, water is wasted, all kinds of problems while they're looking for baths. It's just a horrendous O&M problem. But as we're putting our infrastructure in now, we should do it. And, and I think Davis and Brown <coughs> should have a lot of the everything old projects. Digital, everything digital. And they have gone back and put a lot of old on it. 
So the the city really should should have that. So I think that's something you guys. You're saying we need to have a repository on site. Most companies, and it would be good to just benchmark some some municipalities, even in, even Archville, which is the same size, and to kind of see what they've done. But you need to be able, like you guys was asking, to we need to have a GPS um, uh, system. I mean, it's just technology that's been out there for decades, and it's not terribly expensive. Not terribly difficult to manage. What's so, terribly expensive? Um, I think it's affordable. When you do a that's, when I say not terribly expensive, when you do a cost benefit ratio, it would be definitely less than one because the benefits will tremendously outweigh the cost that you're going to invest in. <coughs> What's the cost? I don't know the cost. All I can Probably tell just you. just rough, I guess. And would we need to get we're talking about vendors 000? just to come exactly. in and evaluate? Exactly. And but provide and, some proposals. And, and, yeah, no. and a good thing you could do that doesn't cost much money is you could just do a, a benchmark study. Because you, when I was benchmarking for rates and stuff for the stormwater fee, Hartsville. I talked to um, Jim over there. I talked to the, direct, the public works director in Florence. Those guys were eager and gracious to sit down and explain their system. And, and Brian, Councilman uh, Garden, would be able to get, they would even share costs and everything. Okay. You know, so at least we can kind of get a feel, you know, for that. Yeah, mostly the larger systems have a GIS staff. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Or at least one yeah, person. Yeah, at least one person. At yeah. least, you know, at least one person. And the thing about it is that person doesn't even have to be full time, but just at least have the capability. Like if something breaks, where you can say, okay, what I what I have underground over on Main Street, for an example. The guy goes to the system, he pulls it up, tells you the size of pipe, the elevation, the manhole, he tells you whether it's water, he tells you whether it's sewage. So and so you, when you <laughs> dig, you don't have to worry about breaking it. Tells you where your valves are, which is very critical. Right. So something we need to consider doing this budget cycle. So we decided what we're going to do as far as raising the rate, so we're going to do that. Water, sewer, water, sewer, one dollar. Just what you propose here, like pretty good. Coin. So we're looking at about $1.50, 50 cents. Mm. What's the 3% equate to? 54 cents. 54 cents of dollar fifty more. Thank you. Um, so what John was proposing yeah. is what you, okay. okay. And okay. that's what? Okay. Down at okay. the bottom where it says capital improvement. Okay. I would. I know we also have um, that hundred and six thousand in the budget Stop. for storm water. That is a floater. Um, could be worse. Could be better. But if we end up having some money sitting in it, I would propose that we take a look at, at maybe using some of that money or some money from somewhere and try to. Not take it all out of frigging them, but um, see if we can't come up. Well, I take that back. Before we talk about money, I think we need to get Howard to make contact. He and Janie can talk about making contact. Anybody that's good with computers and have somebody come in and do an evaluation because they don't charge to evaluate because they hope that they will make their money selling it. But have somebody come in and. and make some suggestions. Now they would suggest all the pie in the sky stuff that you could imagine, but Howard and Janie ought to be able to filter through that and make some determinations as to what we need uh, to get by as opposed to just, you know, we may not need a gold-plated Rolls Royce, but we do need at least a decent running Chevrolet or Ford. Um, as long as it's not a moped. <laughs> 
I don't like a moped. I like a moped. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody, we're, we're riding in the rain. We got a gremlin. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Howard, can you get with some municipalities and find out who their vendors are and, and just begin perhaps getting the ball to roll to, to see what we what's available to that, us. That's a specialized uh, area, especially since this water sewer that we're looking at. Um, mm -hmm. I know there's some, there are some vendors like that. Do you have any ideas or you don't, either one of y'all know? Not right off. Our rural water's got some dealings with some GIS outfits. What, what I would do is benchmark for some local municipality because you, they may be using some local vendors, which is always but you want a, this system is your water, your sewer, and your storm. It does all of that infrastructure. It's like it, does, it, does, what you need it doesn't That's recognize. Well, it just who's in charge? The mayor's gone. <laughs> you don't take a three minute break. Let's take a 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 break. That's what it is. He's trying to get oh, yeah. a cigarette. That's right. That's right. That's exactly what I'm saying. Take a three-minute break.